Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. GPS jamming apparently is becoming more and more common and starting to become a real threat. Spirant and a partner company did release data that indicates that about 150,000 attacks against the GPS systems have been detected over the last three years. And it's not just high-end nation states and such that perform the attacks. Apparently, they have become somewhat common now with Pokemon Go players, which indicates how easy some of these attacks are. Now, personally, I'm a little bit surprised about the Pokemon Go aspect because typically with cell phones, it's not that terribly difficult to actually just install software that provides fake GPS coordinates. But just yesterday, I talked about how the prices for software-defined radios are becoming more and more affordable, so it may just be simpler to jam GPS. Overall, of course, there are some important safety considerations here. Many hobby and professional drones rely on GPS, and then of course also commercial aviation. Making GPS more secure is certainly possible and an encrypted version of GPS does exist for military applications. But of course, one of the attractive features of GPS is the very cheap receiver, which of course wouldn't be possible if the signal would be encrypted. And Microsoft released a real nice command reference for all the different command line commands that you have available in Windows. This was released as a pretty massive PDF. It's about a thousand pages in size, about one or two pages for most of the commands. They also released it on GitHub. So you can actually fork it, you can edit it. The file itself is actually not that large. It's about a four plus megabyte. So not much fluff, just all different commands and quick descriptions on what they do and what command line arguments are available. Lojack is software that has been available for many years now to secure laptops. In case of theft, Lojack allows you to locate and erase a laptop. Also do things like connect to cameras, have some limited remote control. Now the Arbor Security Engineering response team has seen a version of Lojack in the wild that apparently is compromised. This version of Lojack does connect to command control servers commonly associated with Fancy Bear, speak the Russian intelligence services and provides essentially the functionality that you expect from Lojack to these command and control servers. Now, this is not a backdoor in the Lojack product. I've seen some comments that suggest that instead, this is really just a Trojan version of Lojack. Essentially, all you have to do is you have to download a legitimate version of Lojack. You will be able to use a hex editor in its simplest form to then change the endpoints that Lojack connects to. And then you have to trick the victim into installing this backdoor version by, for example, claiming that it is an update to the software. This attack methodology has been known for a couple of years now, but uh, this is as far as I know the first time they have actually been seen in the wild. And according to Sophos, an open redirect vulnerability in the Google Maps API is currently being exploited by spammers. Now, Google used to have its own URL shortening service, goo.gl. That service has been discontinued. So attackers apparently are now using the Google Maps API in order to provide a similar functionality. Of course, Google is usually whitelisted and most users will not expect anything malicious from Google. In this case, however, once you're clicking on this legitimate Google URL, you will immediately be redirected to the malicious URL. Open redirect vulnerabilities are always kind of tricky in that in itself, they're really not all that harmful, but if they show up on the right site, in particular sites that are targeted for phishing, they can be quite devastating because users believe they're going to a specific site, but then are being redirected to a lookalike version of that particular site. 
And then we have yet again another vulnerability in popular security camera DVRs. In this case, it's actually not just default passwords. So if you change the password for your DVR for these particular models, an attacker could just request whatever password you set. All the attacker has to do is add a cookie. UUID equals admin and in doing so, the attacker will be able to download a list of all users and the passwords for the particular device. There appear to be about 55,000 vulnerable DVRs available according to Shodan. However, some of the scans that I have seen of some of the devices listed in Shodan show that they use default passwords anyway. So this new vulnerability doesn't actually change the threat landscape much. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.